Well, first of all, may I say thank you for Dr. Curtis, who I've known for many years, for inviting me to come to this uh, occasion, and also, of course, to the sponsors who have made this occasion possible. My topic is the destruction of churches and monasteries, in, in, principally in Iraq. I'm going to touch a little bit on Syria, but mindful, of course, that Emma's topic is on Syria. Well, Daesh, of course, we know, have embarked on an orgy of death, destruction and defilement and instigated a deliberate policy of ethnic cleansing. In June uh, 2014, the exodus of Christians from Mosul was particularly poignant. That ended probably a 1,600-year-old community who had been lived, lived in Mosul and, of course, had contributed over the centuries considerably to the city. The people were deprived of their homes and livelihoods. Their possessions were taken from them in their flight. And so may, uh, the Christian communities have left Mosul. My reliable information is that they will not return to Mosul, even if it was taken out of the hands of Daesh because of their fears of safety and security. So they have been targeted to eradicate the living heritage of the landscape of Iraq to which they've contributed over the centuries. But not content to exterminate the living communities of Iraq and Syria, Daesh have now embarked on a program to eradicate the physical evidence of the great heritage, to destroy the cohesion of living communities, so making it very difficult for them to... To, uh, to return. And their they've destruction, I believe, of, of buildings, which we will see, and John has talked about it in the pre-Islamic heritage and Lamia on, on the, the Muslim heritage, is to destroy the symbols and witnesses of communities that remind us of the rich ethno-linguistic strands that were part and parcel of Iraq's heritage and that also of Syria. So, of course, need I say, Daesh show their gross ignorance and their cultural darkness in doing this. One has to qualify, of course, what Daesh do by, we've seen a couple of times, the, Al, uh, uh, the bombing of the al Askari Mosque in Samarra 2006. So there have been predecessors to the destruction, the cultural destruction in which they indulge. And, of course, uh, mass um, ethnic cleansing, 2006, 2007, the Christian community that was principally located in Dora in Iraq was um, expelled again under the pain of death if they did not convert. Um, so... There is an ongoing pattern of violence which Daesh have um, uh, or are perpetuating. So they have inherited this pattern, but of course they are uh, engaging in it in a much greater uh, degree. The impact in the West, I think, is much greater because of the videos and the publicity which they show, which I think is part of their, uh, their strategy. Now, um, so, uh, to date, a total, and uh, could I have the, I'll just, just do show me. Right, okay. So, so in Iraq, a total of 72 churches and ecclesiastical institutions have been targeted majority of churches in, in Baghdad and Mosul, of course, that's the greatest concentrations of Christian communities, Kirkuk, Ramadi. Uh, in Syria, 88 churches, including churches in Aleppo and villages along the Khabur ri uh, uh, River. Again, the pattern in Syria is one of bequeathing that of previous terrorist groups or uh, perhaps they're still there, but the, the, the pattern of bequeathing to Daesh patterns that have already been uh, in, in motion. 
Daesh, of course, one can say they are egalitarian because they target all denominations, Armenian, Catholic, Assyrian, Anglican, um, Seventh-day Adventist, Chaldean, Catholic, the whole range. So they do not distinguish between different groups. It's sometimes you do find, for example, that older churches belonging to the apostolic branches of Christianity might have had a little more tolerance than new churches that were equated with uh, Western evangelism. This is not the case with Daesh. They just, it's a blanket removal. Uh, so in Iraq, and I'll take it, this is, the ch this is in Syria, the churches, I'll just do a little brief, but I'm not going to touch too much on Emma's ground. These are the churches in the Harbour region that were uh, targeted in February of this year when 35 Christian villages, principally belonging to the Church of the East, these people call themselves Assyrians, um, were taken. The citizens were captured. Some have been released, but the fate of many of them is unknown, and the churches in the villages have been destroyed. And I will show you... That's um, what the church looked like. These are before and after photos, the typical sort of photos that we, uh, images that we see. Hang on. Don't tell me, I'm, I am pointing it up. Okay, let's go back, hang on. I don't know why, but it, uh, right. Here again, you, whoops. Let me take that. I am pointing it to the... So here we see various churches. Now, we'll leave that. We'll go to St George's churches in Mosul. So, as I said, Daesh, it's a blanket destruction to eradicate Christians from the region. They've paid no attention, as we know, to any architectural merit, even churches that were built under uh, Islamic rule. Um, in December in 2000, uh, 2000, of course, continuing the previous violence, they, they just have destroyed many churches. So um, all churches in Mo and religious institutions in Mosul have been either destroyed or occupied some churches have fared slightly better than others. St. George's Church in Mosul, or monastery, was first bombed in December, December the 23rd, 2009. It was located, or it is located, north of Mosul on a hill and had been founded by the Church of the East, Akka, the Nestorian Church, in the 10th century was rebuilt in the 19th century by the Uniate Chaldean Catholic Church, which still held the ownership. December 2014, militants returned and removed the crosses from the roof of the monastery and, of course, hoisted the flag of Daesh. And again, in March this year, the church was attacked by uh, men using sledgehammers to destroy the facade and the church bells were thrown to the ground. Even the dead didn't escape because they ripped the crosses off the graves in the cemeteries, and I believe the cemetery has been destroyed. The, the church has remained because, as you can see, it's got high walls, and Daesh think it is suitable for a, uh, uh, to incarcerate uh, women's uh, women, so it serves as a women's detention centre. But they've removed all signs of any Christian occupation. But the building is actually intact. So uh, that perhaps is a slightly gratifying news. Uh, but this isn't, of course, the case with many churches. The Green Church in uh, Tikrit, which, and I'm going to. Is this a uh, this, we've seen some pictures with uh, uh, Lamia. Uh, 8th century, very important church. Uh, also, because it was in collaboration with the uh, Arba'in shrine, the Islamic shrine, a pattern 
of coexistence between Christians and Muslims that you find in Iraq, Syria, Palestine, the most, of course, uh, flamboyant example being the Umayyad Mosque in Damascus. So very interesting for early sociological interpretation. Well, the Green Church in Tikrit, built in conjunction with the Abayin Mosque, a lovely place it was too, uh, has been uh, targeted. Of course, there were very significant excavations by the Archaeological Service um, it, it, uh, under the period of the Ba'athists. Um, the church is a very, very ancient and very important church, and because of its juxtaposition with the Arba'in Mosque, it served as an important reminder of the multi-religious history of Tikrit, which was formerly a very important metropolitan of the Syrian Orthodox Church. So, uh, again, inroads into cultural history. The Ma Bechnam Monastery, which is 32 miles south of Nimrud, uh, has also been a, ma a, a major target for Daesh. Uh, fighters stormed the monastery in 2014 and expelled the monks. Literally, they left with the clothes that they were wearing, did not even allow them to take a Bible or holy books or... Um, any of the sacred relics, and I'm sure uh, maybe Emma will tell us more about Malula, where the very f ancient relics were also destroyed. This happened at the Ma Bechna Monastery. The only saving grace is there is a fabulous program of digitizing manuscripts run from um, Minnesota in the USA by the Hill Museum and Manuscript Library, and they had... Uh, digitized some of the manuscripts and we have catalogues prepared by Iraqi scholars of the holdings but we do not know where the manuscripts are maybe they'll turn up on the, the market maybe they've been destroyed there are rumors that the, the monks buried some of them well that may or may not have happened and it may or may not be good because burying the manuscripts probably won't help them. Uh, it's very, of course, damages the fabric. So, uh, so the, the Ma Bechnam shrine, and it was a very important shrine, built on a 4th century site of the prince, the Sasanid prince, who converted from Zoroastrianism with his sister to Christianity and was martyred. And this is uh, from Harry Luke's book, of the, the shrine in the 20s, you can see it was heavily restored. You can see the American soldier or the soldier standing in front of it with his, um, his gun. Well, the, um, the monastery, so they, the, the monks were expelled in July 2014. In March of this year, um, according to uh, Gianluca Mezzofiore in the International Business Times, uh, the monastery, as she showed images of militants blowing up parts of the ancient monastery. As I said, it's a 4th century site. Very little had remained from the 4th century because of the Mongols, but here you do see wonderful architecture. There's this, this wonderful um, uh, image of uh, purportedly Ma Bechnam attacking the saint, typical of, of Rider Saint. Here you see, and if I, if there is a pointer, I can up the top of the line uh, of here is uh, Syriac, and here is Uyghur. Unique. The Uyghurs were people from Central Asia who came in with the Mongols. Some of them were Christian. There is this the only example we have in the world of Syriac and Uyghur has been published. So, uh, again, the destruction of uh, Ma Bechnam Monastery. Let's see. Ah, let's I want to go back. Should have a picture of it. Oh, dear. I am <coughs> holding it. There. That is the purported destruction. Ah, yes the purported destruction 
We just don't know how much has been destroyed, but again, uh, and one hopes fervently that the very heart of the monastery that had the 12th century um, the architectural features, which are perhaps, and Lamy will probably correct me, but I think there's about a handful of buildings really in Iraq that are dating from the 12th century, from this period. So very precious for Iraq's cultural uh, history. So the, um, so, so we had this major destruction and of course uh, a destruction not only for uh, Christians but also for the whole population of Iraq because again showing the rich cultural and ethnic strands that have come together to form the country's uh, components. So it's undoubted of course that the destruction of churches and monasteries by Daesh will continue. They have ideological reasons for that and although the churches may not be viewed in the same in the same as the same caliber as the great archaeological sites of Nimrud and Hatra, still the collective uh, destruction contributes to the eradication of a unique strand uh, in the whole history of the Middle East and its rich religious, architectural, and cultural interaction between communities. And this deeply disturbing aspect of uh, policy was recently summed up by a young scholar, now let me, in from Sydney, Nicholas al Jilu, who says, I am an Astorian. He's of an Assyrian background, Christian background. IS is destroying the rich cultural fabric of the area, the multi-layered, multilingual, multi-ethnic aspects of society. It's not just our heritage, it's the heritage of the world. It is part of our history and now it is gone. So I think that sums up uh, quite graphically what the impact of Daesh is and of course that is precisely what their aims and objectives are. Thank you very much.